Alrighty, let's continue with our colligative property discussion. Um, as you recall, we just wrapped up with three colligative properties. We talked about uh, vapor pressure lowering, we talked about freezing point depression, and boiling point elevation. Um, we also learned how to calculate the molecular weight of something um, based upon its uh, by how much it depressed the freezing point of a solvent. And that was the problem we just wrapped up, example number 16. Now I want to do example 17, which uses a solvent other than water. Um, in this particular case, I have the freezing point of a solution of 0.258 grams of benzoic acid dissolved in 40 grams of benzene. So my uh, solvent this time is benzene, and the solution freezes at 5.23 degrees. We, find, we want to find the molecular mass of benzoic acid, that's the solute, and we'll use the values. Well, we won't use the ones in the back of your text. I have this chart that I showed you folks earlier. So benzene, uh, the normal freezing point we can see is 5.5 degrees, and the freezing point constant is 5.12 degrees Celsius per molal solution. So if the normal freezing point is 5.5, and the freezing point of my solution is 5.23. That's a depression of 0.27 degrees. And I suppose, significant figure-wise, we're only allowed to go to the nearest tenth. We should probably call that 0.3 degrees Celsius. And that will only give us one significant figure in our molecular weight. Which, by the way, is quite common. It's difficult to get very accurate temperatures. Um, however, it is very simple to get accurate mass measurements. So oftentimes, uh, temperature or temperature difference in this case is uh, the value, the measurement that limits the number of significant figures in our final value. So let's proceed here. Um, once again, delta T sub F will equal K sub F times the molality. Once again, this is a non ionic solute. So we just use this equation here. I think I mentioned last time in AP, we add a tiny bit to this equation, but for right now, we'll just leave it as, so, as such. Now to find molecular weight, remember, we need to know two things, grams and moles. And remember, grams is always given in the problem. We just have to find it. So let's read the problem, and let's find out how many grams of solute we have freezing point of a solution, we have 0.258 grams of benzoic acid, and that's what we want to find the molecular weight of. So that was given. So we need to find moles. What part of this equation can we solve for to help us find moles? Think about that for a second. Okay, if you said molality, you are correct. Molality would be the delta T sub F divided by the K sub F, just bringing KF to the other side and solving for molality. In this case, our delta T sub F is our 0.3 degrees Celsius divided by our Kf for, for benzene. And our Kf for benzene is 5.12 degrees Celsius per molal solution. So 5.12 degrees Celsius per molal solution. And degrees Celsius divide out. So once again, unfortunately, we only have that one significant figure. Let's see what our calculator says. We have 0.3 divided by 5.12 gives us um, 0 0.059 molal. I'm going to carry that extra digit here, and then we'll round off to one sig fig when I'm finished. Now. That is not the number of moles. Some kids will make a mistake and put the molality over here for the number of moles. That's not true. Remember, molality is actually moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. So we have to get rid of kilograms of solvent. So let's work down here. We have 0 0.059 moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. Now my solvent, remember, if you read the problem, is benzene. So let's get out of kilograms of benzene. And we'll see that we have 40.0 grams of benzene, which of course is 0 0.0400 kilograms. Kilograms divide out uh, of benzene, and we have moles of solute here. So let's take a look. We have our 0 0.059 
I'm going to multiply that by 0 0.0400 and we end up with uh, 0 0.002 once again we'll carry an extra sig fig 4 moles of solute here. Now that's what we're going to put over here so we can find our molecular weight. Let's just clean it up a little bit and do it right here. Remember molecular weight is grams per mole. So let's just write that again down here so it looks a little prettier. We have 0.258 grams of solute divided by 0 0.0024 moles. We'll round this off to one significant figure when we're done. So let's see what we get. 0.258 divided by 0 0.0024 moles. Looks like my molecular weight says 107.5. If we're only allowed two significant figures, boy, we're going to have to say, well, I'd like to say 110 grams per mole. Sorry, that has two sig figs. We only have one. So I guess we have to say 100 grams per mole would be our reported molecular weight. Once again, we're limited in our significant figures because of that darn temperature difference. We only had one sig fig to work with. Okay? Now you'll be asked to do this on your homework tonight. Use examples 16 and 17 to help you. Please use them as a model. Don't just look at the problem and say, I can't do this. Follow the process. Rewatch this video if you need to. And follow the process. Listen carefully to the steps and you can do this. Alrighty, last page here. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about osmotic pressure. We use this term in biology quite a bit. Um, when we talk about osmotic pressure, we talk about the movement of water from an area of high water concentration to low water concentration. So osmotic pressure is going to be the pressure created by the movement of water from high to low water concentration. I have a little simple picture here. Hopefully you can see it on the video. This is a tube and that tube is sealed on this end with a semi-permeable membrane. Now a semi-permeable membrane has um, tiny little holes, sub-microscopic. They're at the molecular level where some particles can flow through because they're small enough. Other particles can't because they're too large. It's almost like a, an atomic type of filter. Now, inside this tube, if you can see it, I have solute particles mixed with water. Outside the tube is a beaker. I'm not sure if that shows up very well. Now, this beaker is full of pure water, just pure distilled water. So the concentration of water is higher outside the tube than inside. Now, water will move from high to low concentration. So water will tend to move into the tube. Now think about that. As water moves in, won't the, water, won't the level inside the tube start to rise? Well, if you can imagine placing a plunger on this side and pushing down with enough force to stop that water level from rising, the force you'd need to add would be the osmotic pressure. So the pressure needed to stop the flow of water in. In fact, if you pushed it hard enough, you could actually get something called reverse osmosis to occur where the water particles that are tiny enough inside the tube could actually flow out against the concentration gradient and start filling up the beaker. In fact, there are some high-tech water filters that work um, by that means. Uh, but those are not the normal type of water filters. Those would be the type of water filters they might have in life rafts where it would be necessary to filter out, uh, not filter out, but, but purify salt water so it would be drinkable um, in ocean settings and things like that. At any rate, turns out that osmotic pressure is, you guessed it, a colligative property. 
the higher the solute concentration, and it doesn't make a difference what it is, the higher the concentration of solute particles, the greater the force of water moving in, and the greater the osmotic pressure. Now the symbol for osmotic pressure is the Greek letter pi capitalized. It is equal to the molarity times R times T. Now that might look familiar to you guys. Let me do a little sidebar here for you. Um, if I did PV equals NRT, I'll bet you'd say, boy, that sounds familiar. We did that in our gas law chapter. Sure enough, we did. If I solve that for P, I would get NRT over V. Now, N over V is moles over liters. Guess what moles over liters is the same as? You guessed it, molarity. So, the pressure of a gas is the molarity of that gas times RT. And I claim that particles dissolved in water behave similar to particles uh, of a gas in a container. If you think about this, if you have a room and there's gas particles in there, here's a gas particle, where's that going to move? Is it going to stay in that one spot? Nope, it's going to move throughout the room. It's going to bang up against the walls of that container. Now, let's fill that room with water, all the way full of water. And you have, let's say, a sugar particle there. If you let that sugar molecule go, won't that move similar uh, to a gas particle? It'll move throughout the entire container. So particles dissolved in a solvent behave similarly to gases in their container, in their sealed container. So we use the ideal gas law constant R, and it's the same one. R is 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. It's the same gas law constant that we used in an earlier chapter. So, with that in mind, let's see if we can find the molecular weight of something. We have 96 grams of a solute. It's dissolved in enough water to make 0.75 liters of solution at 25 Celsius. The osmotic pressure of the resulting solution is 119 millimeters of mercury. What is the molecular mass of the solute? Now remember, molecular weight, we've done two of these now, is grams per mole. Now before I tell you, think about this. Which two of these are always given, grams or moles? If you said grams, you've been listening. This is always given in a molecular weight calculation. Here, my solute is 96.0 grams. So now all I have to do is find the number of moles of solute. Then grams divided by moles will give me the molecular weight. So I'll we'll use our osmotic pressure equation. Which part of this will allow me to solve for moles? If you said molarity, you are correct. Molarity is equal to the osmotic pressure divided by RT. So let's do that. My osmotic pressure is 119 millimeters of mercury. Uh, if you remember, we don't like millimeters of mercury when we're using our ideal gas law constant, R. So we're going to hop out of millimeters of mercury and get into atmospheres. One atmosphere is defined as 760 millimeters of mercury. Divided by R, remember, 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Divided by T, now it's 25 degrees Celsius, but remember, we need to Kelvinize that. So that's uh, 2, oops, sorry, boy, I'm making all sorts of mistakes here. That's 298 Kelvin kiddos. So, millimeters of mercury divide out, atmospheres divide out. Kelvin divides out, I'm left with moles per liter, which is my unit for molarity. So let's see what that is. We have 119 divided by 760 divided by 0 0.0821 divided by 298. That gives me, to three significant figures, 6.40 times 10 to the negative one, two, three. Now, that unit is molarity, which is moles per liter. This is not the number I put here. I want just moles, so I need to get out of liters of solvent. Well, that's not a big deal. 
I have 0.75 liters of solvent, or solution, excuse me. So I'll multiply by 0.75 liters of solution, and we will have moles. So let's see what that turns out to be. So I'll multiply the previous answer by 0 0.750, and we end up with 4.80 times 10 to the negative 1, 2, 3 moles. Now that's the number that can go right here. Okay, so let's find our molecular weight. Now I need to remind you, or just mention, that when we use osmotic pressure to find molecular weight, we're usually finding the molecular weight of proteins. Proteins are long chains of amino acids. They're polymers of amino acids, so oftentimes these have huge molecular weights, much larger than what we're used to seeing. So don't be surprised that this molecular weight turns out to be thousands, if not tens of thousands, of grams per mole. So, let's give this a whirl. We have 4.80 times 10 to the negative third moles. So let's plug and chug and see what we get here. We have 96.0 divided by 0 .00480, and we end up with, holy cow, 20,000. Now if we round that off to three sig figs, which is what we're allowed, we end up with 2.00 times 10 to the fourth grams per mole. So that's 20,000 grams per mole, and just as I said, that's a pretty doggone big molecular weight. That's not unusual when you do osmotic pressure problems. Okay, there's a little picture on the bottom of your notes. It's showing blood cells in something called an isotonic solution, a hypotonic solution, and hypertonic solution. I want you to take the time to look up those vocabulary terms on your own and see how it applies to the image in your notes. Okay? Well, that's it for colligative properties, kiddos. Um, please, you have problems on these on your homework, use your notes as a guide. Use your textbook as a guide. They do several problems like this in your book as well. Please don't look at it and close your book and say, I can't do this. You can do it. Alrighty. Have a great night, and we'll start our new chapter soon. Bye-bye.